It has been part of mafia myth for decades. On September 10th, 1931, at the behest of Charles Lucky Luciano, a wave of young mafia assassins spread across New York and New Jersey, gunning down the Mustache Peets, the older generation of bosses who control the rackets, all to make way for new ways of generating cash and to seize control of the National Crime Syndicate. But did it really happen? Is there any truth to a massacre that supposedly inspired a similar scene in the movie The Godfather? Sources are scant, memories are unreliable. But here we will try to separate the truth from the myth of the Night of the Sicilian Vespers. By the early 20th century, the Italian Mafia had established itself in the United States. By and large, it was led by members of the Sicilian Mafia who had come to the United States, particularly New York City, as adults. Their most prominent figures were Joe the Boss Messeria and Salvador Maranzano. These mustache peats generally wanted to maintain Sicilian criminal traditions and were primarily interested in working with and exploiting their fellow Italians rather than the public at large. To that end, they opposed their younger members' desire to work with powerful Jewish and Irish gangs, even though this offered lucrative opportunities such as illegal drugs. This old world attitude annoyed younger capo regimes, so-called young Turks, such as Lucky Luciano and Vito Genovese. During the Castella Maurice War, Luciano had built a network of young mafiosi in both the Messeria and Maranzano camps, many of whom resented the old guard. Like many myths, the Night of the Sicilian Vespers begins with a kernel of truth. Charles Lucky Luciano had made a secret deal with a rival boss, Sal Maranzano, to kill his current boss, Joe the Boss Messeria. In return, he would become Maranzano's second in command. On April 15, 1931, Luciano met Joe the Boss Messeria at a restaurant called Nuova Villa Tamaro on Coney Island. After dinner and a game of cards, Luciano excused himself to the bathroom. Several gunmen entered the joint and murdered Joe the Boss. According to authorities, these gunmen were Albert Anastasia, Vito Genovese, Joe Adonis, and Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Eventually, Luciano realized Sal Maranzano also needed to be eliminated. On September 10, 1931, several Jewish gangsters disguised as government agents entered Maranzano's office. They stabbed the old boss multiple times before administering a coup de grace with a gun. What happened next is a muddle of myth and truth. According to a former U.S. Attorney General, 40 members of La Cosa Nostra died by gunfire on September 10, 1931, the same day of the Maranzaro murder. Many accounts hold that these murders took place all around the country, as old mustache peats were assassinated to make way for a new order of organized crime. Some of these murders have been documented. On September 13th, the bodies of two Maranzaro allies, Samuel Monaco and Louis Russo, were retrieved from Newark Bay. Joseph Siragusa, leader of the Pittsburgh crime family, was shot to death in his home. And on October 15th, Joe Artisan, the head of the Los Angeles family, disappeared in what many believe was part of this alleged plan to eliminate the old world Sicilian bosses. No one has ever been able to compile a list of the remaining supposed victims on the night of the Sicilian Vespers. The fact is that, at the time, younger mafioso had been knocking off older mustache peats for years, all because they stood in the way of new ways to make money. Luciano maintained that mass slayings were unnecessary, stating, 
The real and only reason Maranzaro got his was so that we could stop the killing, that it was all over. How many actually died due to this gangster generational shift may never be known. We do know that there was one other killing that fatal night. Gerardo Scapardo, the owner of the Novella Villa Tomorrow, the Coney Island restaurant where Joe the Boss was murdered, had conveniently decided to go for a walk just before Joe the Boss was gunned down. On the night of the Maranzaro murder, he also was killed. It may be presumed that Luciano felt killing off Scarpato would be a nice gesture to the Mazaria faithful. The killings committed by the Mafia and other criminal groups in the early years of the 20th century may never be known. Investigations were cursory and forensics primitive. But considering the guile, ambition, and ruthlessness of figures like Charles Lucky Luciano, Sal Maranzaro, and others, their lives and crimes will always remain intriguing and fascinating. This is Deviant Knowledge. Thanks for watching.